Hello, this is Eric Martin, lecturer of mechanical engineering at the University of Maine. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create, save, and open a dedicated drawing template in SolidWorks that can be used for graphical linkage synthesis. I will then demonstrate how SolidWorks can be used for function synthesis of a crank rocker mechanism. First, we see that we have SolidWorks open, so what we'll do is open up an existing blank drawing. It doesn't really matter what you choose. I've got a title block here. Maybe you have a screen that looks something like this. You can click Drawing. It doesn't quite matter. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the existing sheet, and we're going to click Delete, and then it's blank. Now, this next step is somewhat important, so it doesn't ask you for a new drawing sheet each time you open up the new template. So we're going to right-click, go to Edit Sheet Format, and this drop-down triangle appeared. Now we'll just exit this. It is very important that you do exit it, and also notice that once it is exited, the drop-down dialog triangle remains. Now I'm currently in inch pound second. I want my template to be in millimeter gram second, so I'm going to choose it down here. I'm also going to want to adjust my decimal places. And these are user preference, but this is what I like. I like to have for millimeter systems, I like to have one decimal place for the length. If I'm doing dual dimensions with inch, go to two decimal places, angle, one decimal place. And the mass and section properties aren't important here, so we'll leave it as default. What we're going to do next is create different layers in SolidWorks for our linkage positions and dimensions. So under View, Toolbars, Layer, we see this dialog box pop up. I'm going to drag it to my toolbar. Clicking on the icon on the right, I can add and delete and modify my different layers. I'm going to get rid of the initial layers. It'll give me a warning. That's okay. I'm going to delete or select and select and delete. Give me another warning and that's okay. And now I'm going to create five new layers. New. First one will be called link. I'm going to make this black. And the line style will be a solid line and then the thickness will be 0.18 millimeters. Please note, I later changed this to 0.35 millimeters to make it a little bit bolder. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to call this one Dims for Dimensions. I can click on the color icon to make this one. I'm going to make this one green. And the style will be solid and the thickness will be 0.18 as we see here. A new layer. I'm going to call this one construction. Make this one gray. There's a gray down here that I'll use. I'll leave that to be 0.18. And the style for this one, I'm going to make I'm going to make it this chain. It's kind of like a construction line in SolidWorks, just a smaller version of it. Shorter dashes. I accidentally clicked OK. So I'm going to go back to my layer properties, make a new layer. This one's going to be called New Links. This will make a nice bright blue here. Dashed line. This one will make it 0.35 millimeters, so it's twice as thick as the other one. And then one last one. This one's going to be called Hidden Dimensions or Hidden Dims. And then this one will just be a solid gray. It's not important to have everything exactly as I have here. What is important is that you have distinguishing lines and identifying layers. I'm going to hit OK. And now I can select my different layers as we see here from the drop down menu. I can also hide and show the different layers by clicking on the eyeball. And I can even change the color if I so choose. If I go to New Links and then draw a line, when I draw a line, we're going to see that it's that blue dashed line. If I were to change my layer here and go to Construction and make a circle, we can see it's the same color and style as we have here.
I can hide and show the different layers. The other thing I can do is once I select a line, I can change it on the right under options and make that to be a existing link. So we want to save our template and we don't want to have this existing geometry there. So I'm going to select it, delete it. I'll type F to fit it. I'm going to go to save as. I'm going to go to drawing template. And when you do this, you want to be careful because you may end up going to the default SolidWorks location. You can watch my other video on how to navigate the SolidWorks files. I'm going to call this link synthesis. And actually, I already have one right there. But I would go ahead and save this. Call this synthesis too. And hit save. Now we can go ahead and close this. And when I'm ready to start a new linkage design, I'm going to go to new. I'll go to advance. We'll go to my own template or wherever I have it saved, and here it is, Synthesis 2. Click OK, and now I'm ready to start designing. Anything I do to this, even if I change my layers here and change some of the colors or styles, it will not change the existing template. Our first example will be Function Generation Synthesis. Function Generation typically means that we want our linkage to have a specific distance or angle that it moves through. This differs from path generation, where we want a point on our linkage to move through a certain path, or motion generation, where we want a link to move between specific positions. For this problem, we're going to create a four bar linkage. And here's our function. We want the rocker to sweep between 80 degrees. And we're going to assume that we have equal time rocking forward and back. And what this means is that the motor is at constant velocity which is the case for most of our problems. And in the end, we want to specify the lengths of all the links. So I just opened up a fresh session of SolidWorks. I want to make a new drawing using my template that we just made. I'll come under Advance and under my own template, then Link Synthesis 2. That's what we made. And then if I click, it'll get rid of that right bar. As I mentioned, we want to make a rocker that sweeps between 80 degrees forward and back. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it symmetric about the vertical axis or the vertical line. And so I'm going to come under construction. And now we have a construction layer selected. Come to my line tool under sketch command manager. And I'm going to start and just make a vertical line right there. And that's our first line. Now we'll notice some things underneath that we see that were underdefined. The goal is to fully define our linkage so that we know what our link lengths are. So I'm going to lock or anchor or fix this bottom point. And we didn't see anything here, but if I come up to my view manager, this little eyeball, and there's an icon here that says view sketch relations. And now we can see that we have an anchor or fixed relation and a vertical relation. I now want to draw the rocker in its forward position and its back position. So I'm going to come to Link and go back to my Line Tool. I'm going to start at this point down here. That will be our pivot for our link. And so we'll just make a line. I'll escape that and then make a new line. And then we can see our two positions of our rocker. But these aren't the exact positions that we need. So we want to make an angle between those two, between the forward and the back of 80 degrees. We'll come back to our dimension layer, come to our Smart Dimension tool, and we will make that angle 80 degrees. At the moment, these two links are not the same length, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to escape out of my Dimension tool, select one link, press the Control button, select the other link, and then use the Equal Relation. Now they are both the same, and we notice that we can position this in any spot but as I mentioned, I want to make it symmetric. So I'm going to select the back position, the forward position, as well as this vertical. And I'm going to use, looks like I got three lines there. It looks like I got a sheet here for some reason. We'll get rid of that sheet. There we go. Now we can use the, well, we'll try that again. 
And I think what I need to do is I need to, even though we have this line right here as a construction line, SolidWorks doesn't recognize it as a construction line. So I'm going to actually click on this button here for construction. And now I can select those three and now use a symmetric relation. Let's make this line, this length, coupler link, let's make this a length of 50. And we can kind of rearrange things and zoom in a little bit here. And we can see that we're fully defined. So the next thing that we're going to do is determine the size of our crank. In order to do that, we're going to consider that we have equal timing going forward and back of our rocker. And this is the halfway point. And since this is a toggle position and this is a toggle position, that would also mean that our crank and coupler are going to be collinear with the top two points of our rocker here. So our crank pivot will be out here someplace, and when it's fully extended or when it's zero degrees, the coupler will be in line and it'll be at the fully extended spot here. Meanwhile, as it turns 180 degrees, it'll be fully retracted or in the back position, and our rocker coupler and crank will be on a straight line. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to make our construction line here. I'm going to make this point and the point of our rocker. I'm going to make those horizontal. And there's various ways that we can do this. We could have just drawn a line and made a intersection. And at this point right here, I'm going to change my layer to construction. And I'm going to create a circle starting from this point right here to point on the rocker. Again, these three points are all on the same line. And this radius of our circle is going to be the same size as our crank. It's going to be somewhere down the line, so to speak. So I'm going to make a construction line in this direction. So we know that we have a crank somewhere on this line. So I'm going to make that as a circle. And then I'm also going to make these two circles to be the same diameter. Or select both of them and use the equal relation. I can determine what that diameter is by going under dims. I don't need to use that, but that's the layer I'm going to use to show my diameter. And go into my smart dimension tool and see that we have a dimension of 64.3. But we also have this warning saying that do I want to make this dimension driven or driving? Well, if I make it driving, it's going to conflict with the relations that I already have. And so I'm going to make it driven. And that means it's going to be whatever we had over here. Now, if I change this from 50, if I go to double click that, I can make it 55. We can see that everything increased. Let's go back to 50. Now let's determine the size of our coupler. As I mentioned, we want our coupler to be about three times the size of our crank. Now our crank is not a size of 64.3 millimeters. It's actually half of that, so about 62 or so. I'm sorry, 32. So I'm going to take this construction line. I'm going to drag it to this end of the circle. And this construction line starts here and ends here. And let's go ahead and give it a dimension. So that's just the dimension from where I put it in space. But again, we want this to be three times the radius. So let's do this. Let's make it 64.3 slash 2, that's our radius, and let's multiply that by 3. Do that right in our modify dimension box. And we have 96.5. We can round that up to 97, or even 98 or 100. Notice that our drawing is fully defined. That means we have all the information we need for our linkage, but I'd like to see it. So I'm going to come under our new links layer, get rid of the dimension. I'm going to make a line. Let's make a line from our center here to this fixed point right there. That is our ground link. I'm going to make a line from our center to a point on our circle, so I can drag this around. And that's our crank. I'm going to draw a line representing our rocker. I'm going to put it right there. But I want my rockers to be equal to these initial lines, and so I'm going to select the new line or the new link and the old link. Let's make them equal. And finally, I'm going to create a line between the end of the crank. Oh, that's an arc. Let's make a line between the end of the crank 
and the rocker and we're going to make this line the same as this line right here same length now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide most of the information that we have here let's come into our layers let's hide the dimensions hide the construction I'll hit OK and now we should see that there's our toggle when it's a straight line comes all the way 180 degrees for our crank there's our toggle and let's get rid of those relationships we're not getting rid of them we're just hiding them and so that's how our linkage looks now one thing that we didn't do let's go back and let's add our dimensions here is that we didn't give a we didn't determine the size of our ground link 104.3 millimeters again it's going to give us this warning let's keep it driven in other words it's just the result of what we found already and we can change the layer for that so our crank is 64.3 divided by 2 we'll say 32 our rocker is 50 our coupler is 97 and our ground link is 104